Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, um, so uh, this is joint work with uh, Rafi Ostrovsky, and it's a rather old result, at least two years old. Um, but some people here claim they're interested. My mic's supposed to be on. Um, hmm? It's on. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, let me start by um, explaining what edit distance is. Uh, so uh, think of uh, two uh, character strings, uh, X and Y. So these are just uh, streams of characters. And uh, we define a metric on uh, such uh, uh, strings. And the distance uh, between two strings, uh, so we'll denote it by ED of XY, is the minimum number of edit operations that are needed to convert uh, the string X into the string Y. Now, of course, uh, this definition is meaningless unless we uh, give a list of allowed edit operations. Uh, so um, we'll use a pretty standard list of edit operations, uh, insert and delete. And you could also toss in substitute. Uh, I'll explain what these are. So insert means uh, we're inserting a single character in some position in the string. Delete is the reverse operation of deleting a single character from some position in the string. And substitute is just a combination of these two operations together. So it, it replaces a, a particular um, uh, uh, character in the string by a different character. And for all practical purposes of this talk, we can ignore it because uh, the factors that we will uh, deal with are much bigger than two. Uh, so, so we'll just uh, um, use insert and delete uh, for now, or for the rest of the talk. Uh, now, you could think of other uh, edit operations uh, to include there, and, and there are all sorts of uh, variants of edit distance that include them. In fact, I think the original distance included an operation that takes two consecutive characters and flips their order. Uh, but we won't deal with that. Again, this is just a constant factor away from this edit distance. Um, okay, so one more restriction that we will do in this talk is we will only talk about uh, zero one strings. Everything that I say would work for any alphabet, but uh, it's convenient to think of uh, of uh, this particular alphabet. A D can't be fixed otherwise it's hard to insert onto D. I'm sorry. D can't be fixed because otherwise it's hard to insert onto D. Well, you can still um, uh, talk about the edit distance uh, between two uh, D-bit strings, right? So you have to go through strings that are not part of your, uh, of, of your space, but uh, you can still talk about the edit distance. Uh, the you have to think of it, can I sort of intermediately go to this zero or this yeah. Or? yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, so in fact, uh, uh, we can uh, fix the dimension or, or the length of the string, again, without loss of generality, because we can use very simple padding arguments to uh, make all the strings that we want to deal with uh, have the same length. Uh, so, so this is really not a big deal, the fact that we're only looking at strings of, of one specific uh, length. We just add a, a padding character, blanks, at the end of each string. Um, now, edit distance is interesting because it has a lot of applications, uh, very few of which I know anything about, uh, but um, we all know a little bit about it because when we type stuff in a word processor like Word, uh, then uh, <laughs> uh, 
I, I have to make sure that I only use Microsoft you're examples. Right. Yes. yes. You, have to, you have to remember <laughs> where you're getting this. That's right. So. <laughs> but aren't these operations from the pre mouse days? <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> aren't these operations from the pre mouse days? That's right, but uh, what I was, the, the example that I was about to give is, is you, you type, uh, you, you, you um, um, make a spelling mistake and, and then Word uh, obviously fixes it for you, that, at least that's my experience, that I no longer have to think about spelling anymore. Uh, then uh, the way it does it is that it looks for words in the dictionary that are close in edit distance to the stuff that you've been typing. So edit distance is used there and it's used in, in other um, applications uh, uh, that maybe we don't encounter uh, on a day by day basis, so I won't talk about them. Um, so what do we know about edit distance? I mean, th this is a very basic uh, concept in computer science. Uh, it turns out that we don't know a lot about edit distance. So uh, let's talk about computing the edit distance between two strings. There's a very simple dynamic programming algorithm that computes the edit distance between two d-bit strings in time, d in time order d squared. And this has been slightly improved by Masek or Ma Mashek, I'm not sure, and Patterson in 1980. Uh, the improvement is only for basically 0, 1 bit strings or, or any uh, fixed uh, size alphabet. So the improvement doesn't work for large alphabets that depend on, on the length of the strings, but it does work for small alphabets. And it improves this uh, algorithm by a factor of log d. And that's basically all we know. So for general case uh, edit distance, uh, all we know is a nearly quadratic time computation. And it's been open for 26 years to improve this. Um, more recently, um, starting with this, um, I guess it's seven authored paper of Batu and the rest of the gang there. I don't remember all the names, uh, but you can look it up. Uh, people have started looking into uh, computing approximate at a distance. So Batu et al. showed that if you're given two strings, you can determine in sublinear time whether the edit distance uh, is omega of d, I, I omitted the omega here, or you know, some constant times d, some small constant times d, at least that, or, or smaller than d to the epsilon for any epsilon bigger than zero. And that was actually uh, um, a paper that started this recent flurry of activity uh, working on edit distance, so um, I think it should deserve a lot of credit for renewing our interest in, in the matter. Um, later, people showed how to compute in nearly linear time some d to some constant approximation for edit distance. So the, the best result that's known in nearly linear time right now is, is, is about d to the one-third approximation for at a distance. And this summarizes what we know about at a distance computation in the general case. There, there are all sorts of special cases where better things are known and there are issues of parallel algorithms and all sorts of things like that. But a simple sequential algorithm that always computes something useful about the at a distance, uh, that's all we know. Uh, now you can think of other applications relating to edit distance like sketching. So you want to compute a very short sketch of a string so that if you compare the sketches of two strings, you can say something about their edit distance. Uh, the best result prior to this paper was a sketch that can distinguish what, between... What is a sketch? A sketch is, is just a short uh, fingerprint of, of a string. So you, you, want, you want to... Co it's a compression scheme basically that approximately preserves the uh, edit distance between two strings. 
Uh, and it's useful, perhaps, for all sorts of stuff. So the best results, uh, at least prior to our work, was um, something that, a sketch that can, I think it's a constant length sketch that can distinguish between at a distance k, less than k or more than, so k is some, any constant uh, or any number, uh, k and, and k times d to the two-thirds. Um, now, if you have good sketching, then you have uh, some results on communication complexity because you can just send the sketch to the other side. So that's basically what was known. And um, there is the question of nearest neighbor search. So you have a database of, of strings, and you want to find the closest string in, uh, at a distance to some query string. So you want to pre-process the database so that you, you can serve such queries quickly. Uh, well, the best that was known uh, was some d to the epsilon approximation. So, so, so you don't find the closest string. You find something which is no more than d to the epsilon times the, the closest one in distance. Um, uh, for any epsilon bigger than zero. Uh, so this was given first by Indyk, and then uh, Bar Yosef et al. Uh, improved, uh, I think, the storage requirements uh, using a different technique. Uh, and finally, I want to mention that uh, uh, much better results are known for certain variants of at a distance, in particular block at a distance, where you, you can take uh, entire blocks and, uh, of the string and move them somewhere else. So if you, if you can use a mouse, then uh, things are much better, as we all know. Uh, even in theory, they're much better. Uh, so, uh, so block at a distance uh, has much better approximations, uh, in fact, nearly logarithmic approximations versus polynomial here. Arbitrary size block, you move it to some... Can you talk about that for the genome or something where there's rearrangement of... Yeah. I, in fact, the, the version of block at a distance that uh, people know how to deal with is not the standard version of block at a distance where you can take a block and duplicate it next to itself. Or if you have uh, a certain portion of the string that repeats itself, you can delete one of the uh, two repetitions. Th this is really more of uh, you take some stuff and you move it to a completely different place, and, and that costs you just one. Right, and that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm not, the, sure. I'm, not I, I'm not a big uh, expert on anything to do with DNA. I, I mean, I know it's a four-letter alphabet. That's basically <laughs> <laughs> all I know about it. Um, okay, so 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 this is uh, the starting point for this paper. Uh, I also want to explain the other part of the title, low distortion embedding. So here is the idea. Well, we don't know much about at a distance, so let's try to uh, reduce the problem to something that we know more about. And uh, since we have a metric space, we can try embeddings. So we want to map this metric space, uh, 0, 1 to the d endowed with at a distance, into a normed space that behaves in some nice way. A nice way here means that uh, we know how to deal with, these, with the problems that I've mentioned in this nice space. Uh, now, a natural candidate is L1. And the reason L1 is, uh, since we're dealing with finite uh, spaces, it's almost the same as Hamming distance on sufficiently large cube. So wh why is it a natural candidate? Well, one reason is that it seems that Hamming distance is uh, somewhat similar to edit distance. We, 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 we can't remove things, but we can just replace uh, bits by other bits. It looks a little bit, uh, a little bit similar. And the other reason it's natural is because L1 is interesting. So uh, it has good algorithms on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, interesting stuff happens there. Um, so. Um, this is at least the candidate we chose. And uh, other people can choose uh, other candidates uh, that are just as natural. So uh, we don't know much about that. Uh, so let's look at a mapping phi. 
And the distortion of phi is just the product of the Lipschitz constant of uh, the mapping and its inverse. So the distortion me uh, measures uh, by how much uh, distances change, ignoring uh, uniform scaling of, of all the distances. Um, and uh, when we use such an embedding to, um, uh, to implement some application on at a distance, we're going to lose the distortion in the approximation guarantee. And then in L1, usually the stuff that I've mentioned, sketching, uh, uh, communication complexity, nearest neighbor search, that has very good approximations, uh, arbitrarily good approximations. So uh, we're really going to lose the, uh, the, the uh, distortion. So what, what can we show? Uh, well, we can show this distortion. I might take the rest of the talk just to read it. Uh, so it's uh, 2 to the order square root of log d log log d. And uh, I guess the interesting thing about this function is that it's smaller than any polynomial in D. Smaller than, I mean, asymptotically uh, smaller than D to the epsilon for any epsilon. Um, moreover, the embedding is efficiently computable. That's obviously one requirement for doing all these applications using this. Uh, embedding a single point would take, uh, th this is what I mean by efficiently computable, that we, we, can, take a, we can take a point, uh, uh, a d-bit string, and, and find its image under phi uh, in uh, time which is polynomial in the length of the string. So the cube is very large. It has two to the d different points. Uh, we don't have to spend that time in order to compute the embedding for, for one of those points. Now, in general, embedding into uh, L1, finding the best embedding of a metric space into L1 is NP-hard, so we don't even expect to be able to embed uh, um, 0, 1 to the d with edit distance and time 2 to the d, all of it, into uh, uh, find the best such embedding uh, in, even in time 2 to the d, but this embedding we can do efficiently. And uh, as I mentioned, it implies uh, these guarantees for all the applications. So I want to uh, explain how the embedding uh, works. Uh, it's actually uh, rather simple. So uh, we, we take our string and we partition it into blocks of length b. And uh, we'll set b uh, sometime in the future if we ever get there. So, so th th these are uh, uh, the blocks. Uh, I mean, this is the entire. You can't see what I'm pointing at, right? Uh, so <laughs> th th this is the entire string, and, and the different colors denote the blocks. Um, I, I'm just I'm used to overhead projectors. Actually, this is my uh, it's it's my third visit to Microsoft. It's also about my third talk with a, a laptop uh, in in my life. So uh, these things don't behave the way I'm used to. Uh, <laughs> they seem to have a life of their own. Um, so, so what do we do in each block? Well, the, the, the embedding will just be, uh, will compute some stuff for each block. So, so every block will contribute some uh, coordinates to the embedding. And then we'll just concatenate all these coordinates. So we have to explain what we're doing in each block. Um, well, we'll have some, some uh, shift S, and we will take uh, shingles or, or, or uh, substrings of the block uh, in all shifts between 0 and S minus 1. So, so th th this, this, uh, the portion of the string above uh, this yellow line is the first shingle. Then the second one will be shifted by 1 to... Um, uh, it's your right, I guess. Uh, and the uh, third one will be shifted by 2 and so forth. So, so in this particular example, s equals 4. And we're, and we're looking at these uh, substrings of the entire block. The length of the substring uh. Also well, the length of the substring is determined by s. We, we, we take the length so that uh, all these shifts fit in. Exactly. So it's going to be the length of the block minus s plus 1. 
Uh, so he, here are these shingles, and, and I've uh, uh, just written them one by the other. So you see they're pretty similar. They should be, because uh, they're over, they overlap a lot. And we get this uh, set of strings. In fact, it's a multi-set, uh, because uh, some, uh, the, the um, block could be periodic, and, and uh, a string might repeat itself more than once. So we treat it as a multi-set. Uh, we, we need all the copies of, of, uh, of the strings, not just one. Uh, we forget the order. It's just the multi-set, yes. The order doesn't matter anymore. And now each of these uh, pieces, so, so, so this is a substring of the, of the original string. It's part of a block which was uh, part of the string. And, and this thing, uh, we'll, we'll choose B so that this is going to be much shorter than the original string. And we're going to use uh, uh, recursions here. So, so we assume that we, we already constructed an embedding for shorter strings, strings shorter than D. And we're going to use that embedding on each of these pieces. So in this case, there are four pieces. Uh, each one of them will embed uh, into L1. And this gives us, uh, well, I couldn't uh, actually fit in the embedding on one slide. So uh, this gives us uh, these four strings, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma 4. These are the images of these under the embedding for this length of a string. Uh, and we have this multi-set S, because th these could also, if, if a string here appears twice, of course its embedding will appear twice. And we're going to define a metric on these multi-sets of, uh, of uh, strings. In, in fact, you can think of them we're, we're embedding into L1, but I said that for discrete spaces, L1 is about the same as, as the Hamming cube. So think of these as, as, as uh, uh, points in a much larger cube than the one we started out with. Uh, and we're measuring now distances between these strings by Hamming distance. So we're going to define a metric on these sets of strings, on, on sets that contain exactly S strings. And the metric is the following. Uh, we uh, take a uh, minimum cost matching. So, so we have two sets of strings. Let me go to the next slide here. It, it's a bit more obvious here. So we have two, two sets of, of four strings, uh, the sigmas and the taus. And we compute a minimum cost matching between these two sets. So th these are the lines here. Each line represents uh, the Hamming distance between these two things. And, and we compute a minimum cost such matching. And then uh, we look at the, uh, uh, essentially, the uh, average length of an edge in that matching. Now, there's a slight uh, modification to that, because instead of taking the actual Hamming distance, we truncate the Hamming distance at S. So we, uh, so, so we take actually some constant times the Hamming distance truncated with, with S. And we take the average of that over all the, uh, uh, over all the, the, the S uh, edges of the matching. The truncation? Yeah. Uh, that's because that's what we will need in the analysis. Okay. It's so, not clear to me yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, can exp I can explain a little bit. The, the reason we we would like to do that is the following. S will be some scale. Now we will have to embed all the scales. And we don't want one scale uh, to affect, uh, uh, to dominate, uh, uh, the, to, to, to uh, make life bad for us in, in the other scales. So this truncation is done in order to uh, reduce the effect of one scale on, uh, on, on another. Also do something funny because you didn't calculate the average of the minimum matches, but you calculate the minimum matching of the average. No, I didn't. Because you take the min outside the sum. The sum is over the edges. So I, I, I take oh, I the mi the minimum matching and then I take the average of, of an edge on that. No, I think it's it's the it's the average edge of a uh, in 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 the minimum matching in fact. So this is the picture that you should have in mind. We have some some matching, and it shouldn't be necessarily as nice as this matching. 
And now what we do, so we have this new distance function on sets of size s of strings in a Hamming cube. And we're going to embed that into L1. And at this point, you should claim that uh, I'm nuts, right? Because there was this nice thing, uh, this nice at a distance that looked uh, pretty neat. And now we have this ugly distance function. And I'm, I'm even telling you that I actually don't know how to embed it into L1. Um, so uh, with low distortion. So we seem to be worse off. But the point is that uh, it's pretty easy to uh, construct an embedding that has some nice properties. So, so it's not low distortion, but it has the following properties. Uh, the first property is that it's uh, Lipschitz. So, so uh, the distances don't uh, increase too much. In fact, uh, uh, the distances increase by at most a factor of uh, log s. So that's one uh, property. The second property is that at the right scale, at the scale s, distances don't shrink too much. So if uh, all the edges there have, are, are, are large, have weighted uh, the, the Hamming distance between sigma and tau for, for any matching, for all the edges, uh, all the possible edges, is at least s then uh, the distance in the mapping will be at least s over 2. So this is uh, sort of a single scale embedding of, of this, uh, of, of this uh, distance function. So you shouldn't have taken instead of the average distance, the minimum distance? In no, I do want to take the average. Um, yeah, I do want to take the average. I, I need the, the first uh, property to hold for the average, not for the minimum. OK, so how, how do you construct such an embedding uh, psi? Uh, so let's say that s contains uh, little s strings uh, each of length n. Uh, I'm going to construct a horrifically large embedding. So this is, this is non-constructive. And, and we'll deal with that. At least I'll mention how to deal with that later. Uh, so our embedding will be, uh, the coordinates will be indexed by pairs i and z. i is going to be a set of positions in the string, in, in, in one of these strings or in any one of these strings. So, so in, essentially a, a subset, uh, or actually a multi-subset of, uh, of positions 1 through n. And it will have about uh, n log s over so s positions. For each, for each yeah, it's, it, 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 it's yeah, just, uh, yeah, it, it's just, we have these set of indices and they're all in uh, 1 through n. So that's i. And z is a, uh, just a string of length n log s over s. So, so in fact, it's, it's an assignment of, of, uh, of these bit positions. That, that's the way you should think about it. And the, and the coordinate that corresponds to a particular i and z is the number of uh, strings sigma in uh, the multiset S that have uh, these positions exactly uh, equal to, uh, to Z. And then we have to scale this, so we're going to divide everything by the number of coordinates. Now, the whole idea here is that uh, um, uh, you can see that these properties hold by simple probabilistic analysis. Uh, because um, if you have uh, uh, an edge and, and, and the Hamming distance is small, you can calculate the probability of uh, these positions i hitting uh, positions where the two strings differ. And you can use the best matching to claim that there are many uh, times when, when uh, in both sets, 
uh, you get exactly the same positions from the pair of strings that match. If, on the other hand, no pair of strings matches with, with uh, small Hamming distance, you will hit uh, positions where they differ, wh where this string differs from, from everybody else uh, a lot of time. So, so that, that's how you get the second property. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, choose parameters. Uh, I think I've chosen parameters twice, but never mind. I think there's another slide that chooses parameters, but it's the same. Uh, so we'll use this block size. Uh, B will be uh, D over 2 to the square root of log D log log D, the magic number. Uh, which means that we have 2 to the square root of log d log log d blocks. Mm -hmm. Now we have to use uh, many values of s. s is the scale. Uh, and the scales that we will use are all powers of log d. So 1 log d log d squared and, and so forth. Um, so the total number of uh, different values that we have is log d over log log d. Ignoring constants, of course. Um, now, each block and each value of s will generate uh, a set of coordinates using this uh, embedding psi that I just mentioned. Uh, in exactly the same process that, that I mentioned. So, so you, you, you take the substrings, you look at them as a set, you embed each string, and then you uh, use psi to embed the resulting set of strings into uh, L1. So let's see why this works. And here is the crucial observation uh, that explains why it works. L let's look at a particular block. And I I'm going to ignore... Uh, th there's some slight inaccuracy here that only costs us constant factor, so that's why I didn't put it in. Um, we're going to think of the edit operations as being split into blocks. Now, obviously, uh, when you shift strings, uh, the blocks in, in two strings are not exactly in the same place, so I'm ignoring that. Uh, but let's say I, I look at a particular block in, in the two strings, so, so this is the block in, in, in these two strings. And uh, let's say there were k edit operations in, uh, in this block, uh, going from, from string x to string 1. And let's say this number of edit operations k is at most the, the current scale that we're looking at s. Then what do we know? we know that there might have been some stuff going on before we reach this block. And this stuff might have actually shifted the strings in, in some way. But how, how much stuff was going on before? At most, the edit distance of x and y operations previously. So this block between the two strings is shifted by at most uh, the edit distance between x and y. Now, if we ignore this shift, you see, in, in this case, uh, uh, this, the, the top string was shifted uh, to the right by 2 compared to the bottom string. Then the rest of the stuff, the, the rest of the block must match, and it must match with edit distance at most k, because there are k edit operations in the block. Right? So uh, now when we look at the shingles, how many shingles, I, I take the shingle, the, if, if a shingle is contained in, in this blue part with the right shift, I, I take some shingle here and, and, and the shingle here that's shifted by exactly these two positions, these two shingles match with edit distance at most k. So the only shingles that might have large edit distance between them in, in this kind of pairing are shingles that overlap this uh, uh, yellow region, because that's not part of the, of the portion that matches. And the number of sh such shingles is at most at a distance x, y, because that was the length of this yellow part. So some shingles in the matching 
might have large at a distance, more than k, but, but there are only a few of them, or if at a distance x, y is small, uh, and the rest must have a small uh, uh, at a distance. So if, uh, so, so, so this is one property, right? That, that there, there's a small number, if, if the at a distance in the block is small, there's only a small number of edges in the matching that have a large distance. That's what I'm saying here. Now, if on the other hand, we do find even one shingle that matches, I mean, one shingle from X and one shingle from Y that match with at a distance at most S, then I claim that I can align the entire block with a cost which is at most uh, 2s plus uh, the edit distance between these two shingles. Now why is that? Because uh, the number of shifts that I have is at most s. So these two shingles match with a, sh with a relative shift of at most 2s. Or, or Sorry, at most s. And that means that I have to delete s uh, uh, things from one string. Let me do it. So, so, so I found these two shingles that match. Now they match uh, the beginning of the block. Th this is at most s. And the end here, that's at most s. So I, I have to delete this and this. And these two shingles match with at a distance uh, whatever it is. So in total, I can match the block by deleting at most two s positions and matching the rest with at a distance uh, as, as uh, written there. So these two properties are, are the crucial observation for uh, analyzing uh, this um, embedding. So, I'm sorry? For this, for, for the second property, it's enough. You look at the minimum edge. That, that's, that's rather right. than that's the minimum right. matching. That's so right. where are you using the fact that you're using, taking the minimum matching? Uh, in the first property, right? In, in the first property, I'm using the fact that it's a minimum matching. I, I find some particular matching that has good, uh, a good cost. Not all, not all matchings would have good cost. Um, Okay, so, so now we're ready to uh, explain how we upper bound the uh, expansion of a distance, and then we will lower bound the contraction of a distance, and together that will give us the distortion. So, so, so the upper bound will use the first property. And here is how we use this. Uh, well, first of all, what's the cost of these uh, bad shingles? The bad shingles are the pairs that, that don't match with a small edit distance between them. So uh, the cost of those, well, they're, they're at most uh, edit distance uh, x, y of those. Each one of them costs uh, at most s because we truncated the distance at s. And here is why the truncation is important. And then we average. So each of the bad shingles uh, costs us, uh, or the, the, uh, not, not each of them, their total costs us at most uh, at a distance x, y. And this happens in each block. So you can see the importance of keeping the number of blocks uh, small. But then we, we have to pay because each block is long. Now what about the good shingles? Well, um, they're are, <coughs> sorry, there are s of them at most. Uh, and what's the cost of each one of them? Well, the edit distance was, was k. When we did the recursive embedding, we had to pay the Lipschitz constant for that embedding on top of k. And then we had that uh, log s uh, factor that we multiplied the Hamming distance by. So, so, so this is all this part, and then we average over all the shingles, so we divide by s. So when we sum over all the blocks s, right, you, you see that, that the sum of k 
over all the blocks s is exactly the edit distance because k was the number of edit operations in that particular block. So, so, so this thing, when we sum over all the blocks, we just get the uh, edit distance times uh, the, lip, the recursive Lipschitz constant times log s. So when we sum over all the blocks and all the s's that we have, what we get is that this thing contributes the number of blocks times the number of s's times the edit distance. So we want both the number of blocks and the number of put them in different coordinates. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, so this thing would, would, would give us the number of blocks times the number of s's times the edit distance. So we want to keep both the number of blocks and the number of s's relatively small. And this stuff gives us the uh, number of s's plus uh, uh, times, lo times log d because s is at most uh, d. Uh, times the Lipschitz constant for uh, strings of length uh, b at most, times uh, the edit distance, because that's what k does. So, uh, so that's what we get from the uh, second thing. So uh, we get this recursive relation. And let's keep that in mind. Uh, we'll see it again a bit later, but uh, uh, let's look at the lower bound for now. So how do we lower bound? Uh, well. For the lower bound, of course, uh, we just look at uh, one particular bad scale in each block. So that's the idea. So SI is going to be the bad scale for block I. It's going to be the maximum S such that for uh, every pair of shingles in that block, in, in each of the two strings, their edit distance is at least S times the uh, Inverse Lipschitz constant. What's it called? That's it, inverse Lipschitz constant. OK. Uh, so um, on the one hand, we know if, if, if we go one step above SI, right? So, so, so we go to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to the next uh, scale. The next scale is just SI times log N. Then we know there's a good match there, right? Because S was the largest such that uh, this distance was, was large compared to S. So on, on the next scale up, there is a good match, and therefore we can upper bound the edit distance between x and y. It's just the sum over all i of uh, the next scale would match. So we have to pay uh, that next scale times a constant. And we have to pay this uh, inverse Lipschitz constant. So this is an upper bound on the edit distance. On the other hand, in each of the scales SI, we have the property that uh, all the shingles from both strings in that block have a large distance. So in fact, the uh, embedding there will have a large uh, uh, L1 distance. We'll pay SI over 2 in each of these uh, blocks, right? Because, because in, in, in the scale SI, None of the shingles matches the other shingles with, with, with a distance uh, uh, less than SI. So we're going to pay at least uh, this amount. And if you combine these two uh, inequalities together, you get that the inverse Lipschitz constant is at most uh, log D times uh, uh, the smaller one, the, the, Lipschitz, the inverse Lipschitz constant for a smaller set, for a, for a smaller length string, plus uh, log D. This simply comes from the fact that uh, uh, we have a good match in the next scale. Remember, the scales were powers of d. Of log, of log, uh, of log d. d, sorry, of log d. Yes. Yeah. The scales were powers of log d. That's where it comes from. So we, so we get this, this recursive relation for the inverse Lipschitz constant. And now, uh, here is what we have. We have these two recurrence relations. 
And uh, they look a little bit different, but in fact, uh, they solve to uh, the same thing. So, so we'll use this number of blocks. And uh, uh, the solution to the recurrence is just uh, 2 to the, uh, we're solving for, for this thing. This is a function of d, right? And, and b there is a function of d. Uh, it solves to 2 to the order square root of log d log log d. And one simple way to see that this should be the case is, this is sort of hand-waving, but you can just plug in the value and see that it works, uh, is, is you look at the depth of the recurrence, and we're dropping by uh, this factor each time, the, the string length. So the depth of the recurrence should be order square root of log d over log log d. Uh, so you pay poly log d for each of this number of uh, uh, levels of the recurrence. So you should get log d to, to this power. And, and that's exactly this 2 to the order log d, square root of log d, log log d. Yeah? Do you think the single scale embedding you didn't have this log s? How would that affect the bound? Would it be the same? Uh, no, I think. Well, yeah, I think it would. It, it would. I think it might shave off um, one of the log d's there. I don't. I don't think it would affect it. There is log squared would become just log. Yeah, I think so. That, that, that's what. That doesn't change anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're near the end. For those of you uh, who want to wake up. Um, and I have a few concluding remarks. Uh, so first of all, I promised you an efficient uh, uh, embedding, and if you followed even some of the details, uh, those I and Z things were ranging over huge uh, numbers, right? It's all um, uh, S tuples of the set 1 through S, including repetitions, because I allow these coordinates to be the same. Uh, so that's pretty big. And then z was 2 to the s. Um, so uh, the idea is that we don't really need to compute all the coordinates of psi. We, we just need to sample. The, the uh, claim was a probabilistic claim. So uh, we can get these properties with uh, any probability that we like by sampling. Now, in order to uh, get if I just have two strings and I want to embed them this way, uh, I will, if I use uh, order d log d over delta dimensions, uh, the failure probability will be delta. So now uh, the choice of delta would depend on your application. If you're trying to do communication complexity, all you have is two strings and delta could be a constant. So you need d log d dimensions. If you want to take the entire cube and embed it, now we need all pairs in the cube. There are two to the d uh, points there, so there are uh, four to the d pairs, approximately. Uh, and uh, we would need delta to be exponentially small in d, so you need something like d squared dimensions. No, but then you can get it soon into d log d. Uh, using stuff in okay. L1, yeah, using stuff in L1. Okay. That's mm -hmm. So um, then uh, we have this weird upper bound. So the question is, what happens with lower bounds? Uh, well, the lower bounds are not impressive. He well, they are impressive, but uh, not compared to this uh, two to the square root of log d log log d. They're not even close. Um, so uh, so this is the story. The uh, uh, the, the big breakthrough here was, was this paper that introduced some uh, really neat um, uh, methods of using uh, Fourier transforms on, on the binary cube to get lower bounds for embedding into L1. Uh, and then the result for edit distance was uh, somewhat improved later. To, so the current situation is that we know we can't embed uh, edit distance with distortion less than log d. And there's this huge gap. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention. Uh, 
so, so, so one thing that I find interesting about this embedding is we don't have a lot of embeddings into L1. In fact, uh, I think that uh, uh, almost always when you want to embed into L1, it goes through L2, through Hilbert space. Uh, but in fact, uh, for edit distance, there is a uh, lower bound of some of poly D for embedding into Hilbert space. It's very simple. Uh, it, it comes from the fact that edit distance uh, it, on, on 0, 1 to the d includes a Hamming cube of somewhat uh, smaller dimension uh, as, as a subspace. And I think this is uh, due to Charikar and Krautgammer, this uh, observation, but I'm not sure. No? no? Okay, so uh, who should I? Folklore. Folklore, okay. So this stands for folklore. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, but that's not what the paper is about. He said that it's folklore. In the paper, that it's folklore. Ah, okay. Okay, that's why I, the, que the question mark uh, is meant uh, exactly what it is. So, so, so in fact, the, this, this uh, result shows that you can embed into L1 at a distance with better distortion than you can embed into Hilbert space. Um, and I don't know if that's surprising or not, but... Uh, that's true, but you uh, don't really need to embed L1 into L1. It's already there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it's not the bounds that are interesting. It's the fact that there is a technique for embedding that doesn't go through L2. Um, that's the end. Oh, and, and I have, uh, so this is my co-author, and, and it's here for a purpose. Uh, I want you to notice the, uh, the, you know, the grinning face and the sharp uh, look. And this is due to just one cup of uh, coffee. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, and what is this coffee drinker's name? Rafi. Rafi is not. Cool. Sorry, I missed it. I missed a joke. <laughs> 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 this, this is a uh, promotion of uh, Pete's coffee. <laughs> I'm not getting paid by them, but I, I'm trying to attract uh, advertisement money, but without success. <laughs> I didn't say Pete's. Now I said Pete's. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Thank you.